Well, welcome back to the workshop. Um, hopefully, just for a quick one this time. Um, I've had a request from Eli Darry yeah, um, asking me about my uh, ER32 collet uh, chuck and whatnot that I've got. Um, and I think, because there's so many out there. Um, now, the reason I use um, an ER32 I think it's a better system than most of them <clears throat> and also it gives me a good selection of collets from 1 mil up to 20 uh, if you go to ER40 I think it's obviously the bigger the number uh, the, the bigger m bit of metal you can you can hold in your hold in your collet um, <clears throat> they I mean the reason I use them is because uh, it's cheaper than buying a four jaw chuck yeah and the forge or chuck there's a lot of setting up um and uh yeah it's a lot of piddling about really i suppose and a lot of the stuff well, where are we um get one of these a lot of stuff which is this kind of thing that i make this is um a merlin head stud no it's not going in an airworthy aircraft it's going in a uh, a demonstrator it's going into a a static um, demonstrator if you like um, so yeah it doesn't need to be I mean that's an original uh, so yeah it doesn't need to be like that um, so that will do because it's gonna have it's not gonna come under any force the engine won't be running um, and uh, I've got a, a bunch of those to make and it's easy uh, in an AR32 you just put it in tighten put it in the collet tighten the tighten the lock ring up and it's held and it's concentric and you take it out and you put it back in the concentricity stays yeah uh, whereas well, three jaw chucks yeah, they're okay don't get me wrong um now getting back on getting back on track here the let me just uh, we'll pick a we'll pick a nice big we'll, we'll pick the 20. it's got a nice big hole in the middle um that's a that's a collet yeah, and you can see uh, all these little jaws, yeah, they clamp down. And they don't just clamp down here, they clamp at this end as well, yeah. So it's held tight along the length, yeah. So as with a normal chuck, yeah, you're holding it along the length. Um, and uh, they are um, precision made, if you like. Um, now that about mine. I have four, um, oh, sorry, I have three here. Uh, I have the big one, this is the big one, um, complete with, the, they come, usually come complete with the nut on the end. And this says it's an MTB4-ER32 brackets M16, yeah? Now the MTB4 is the taper, yeah? Um, 32, of course it's the collet size, and the M16 is the thread in the end here because you'll need a draw bar because you can't just bash these things in um, and hope they're going to stay. Yeah. Okay. So the Morse taper is self-centering and they do hold well. But if you do get a bit of chatter, yeah, it's going to there's a chance it'll vibrate out. So a draw bar keeps it all in tight. Um, so when you get one, you'll need to make a draw bar if you haven't already got one, um, which is a good exercise in turning. Um, um, I also, uh, on mine, oh, I've just dropped it, never mind, here we go, uh, I made this spacer, yeah, now this spacer just comes in the back and it fills the gap, yeah, between the back of the drive pulley, yeah, and the shaft, so that this isn't going to be waggling around, because uh, you want it all tight. What I also have now while we're looking at that so my lathe over here yeah uh the headstock taper is an mt4 okay number four moss taper the drill head and the tail stock back here are number three moss tapers so uh, you can buy adapters but why bother because these um these collet chucks are not that expensive. Okay. 
Now what I do have here is I have one on a number three motor taper. This is the same sort of thing. Uh, MTB3 this time, yeah. Uh, dash ER32 brackets M12. And the M12, of course, is for the thread at the end. Because you'll need um, you'll need a drawbar to make sure it stays put. Uh, you can't do that with a tailstock, but then uh, I think the only way I'd, reason I'd use this in the tailstock is possibly um, if I was drilling something and I wanted to be really precision. Um, but yeah, another thing I've got because <clears throat> uh, let me just put this away. Uh, another thing we've got is that you can get uh, if you've got a mill. Yeah, uh, I use sometimes or a drill head like this. And you want to drill a round shaft, uh, which are difficult to hold in uh, in a machine chuck. What you can get is um, a collet block. Yeah. So this is a square block of metal, nicely machined. Once again, this is uh, an ER32. Yeah. So you just hold that in your chuck. And then if you need to turn it 90 degrees, you can, you know, if you're milling flaps on things, you can turn it 180. You don't have to disturb what's in here. You turn the whole thing. Um, you can get them six sided if you're milling nut heads or sorry, bolt heads. Yeah. Uh, that kind of thing. If you're milling a, um, say a half AF head on a shaft, you can do it, but you need a six sided one. You can get them. Uh, they're not that expensive. Uh, now, uh, where did I get it from? Well, um, this was the first one I bought, the big one. Um, not quite sure I got that from because I've had it a few years now. And that came with a box of collets. Yeah. Uh, this is a set of collets. It's my own wooden box, yeah. Uh, but I keep them in this. Uh, so there's my set of collets. Goes from one mil up to twenty. Um, use, I use it quite a bit. Um, the the collet block once again. I'm not sure because I've had it about the same time. But this one, I'm sure I got this from either because I can't find the receipt because I've only had this about six months. Either Kronos, Axminster, or RDG Tools. It's one of those three that I got it from, and I think it was the RGD Tools to be quite honest. Um, so yeah, um, I'll put up some, you'll possibly, uh, as you, as you're watching this, you'll see the stills that I'm going to put up, um, of, uh, of these. Um, yeah, there's lots about, it's up to you where you buy it from. Uh, I have a feeling most are made in China anyway, but they are to a good standard. Um, like I've said before, not all Chinese stuff is crap. Um, I think the cheap Chinese stuff is, but uh, you know, it's like most things. If you're willing to pay, not top dollar, if you're American, or top pound if you're English or whatever, top euro if you live um, to the east there. Um, yeah, so you don't have to pay the most. Yeah, you, you can pay a, a reasonable amount and get something good. Um, and like I say, I've been using this for a number of years now and I can produce aircraft grade quality parts using this. Uh, along with the tools and on my little Chinese lathe as well, believe it or not. It's just so accurate, it's stupid. Anyway, um, where are we now? We're up to nine minutes, so by the time I trim this back, it might just, we might just break the 10 minute barrier. So anyway, so Eli, I hope that helps. Like I say, it doesn't matter where you buy it from. Um, I wouldn't go uh, AliExpress or Wish or anything like that, but certainly from a reputable supplier. Um, you know, if you're in the UK, then Kronos, Axminster, or RDG, um, preferably Axminster or RDG, to be quite honest, out of those three. Um, Europe, I don't know. America, I don't know. I know you've got, um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend um, Harbour Freight, which I suppose is the American equivalent to Kronos. Um, yeah. And if you want to go down that route, that's fine. Uh, I prefer 
you know the, the fact that uh, some of them have a slightly higher standard but like i say you know they're already they're all i think made in the same place um here's a i mean one thing i did get um, is a spare nut just in case because these are a bugger to thread on and this one actually came from rdg tools um so yeah um one thing you will need you can get them as a complete set yeah with all the DVDs. I mean, I bought my collet separate from this because it was cheaper to do it that way. You can buy them in a set with all the tools and gubbins, but um, I make do with uh, a C spanner, which is no idea where this came from. Um, I would imagine it's off a motorcycle because it's got a um, a tire a tire bar at one end. So possibly German, but it looks a bit DDR. There we go, DDR. It's got DDR stamped on it. So, yes, the uh, German Democratic Republic. So there we go. So it's a, a communist tool. Yes, but there you go. Um, yeah, and spanners for fitting. Well, I've, I've got plenty of spanners kicking around. I mean, I've got all kinds of stuff. So um, I thought I wouldn't buy one with a tool to do the job because I've got enough tools kicking around and it saves uh, a penny or two, doesn't it? So, yeah, so, um, Eli, I hope that helps you, mate. Um, any more questions, just come back to me, and I'll see what I can do. So, uh, from the workshop, um, where I'm about to start putting threads on these, um, using, using my collet chuck. Um, yeah, so, uh, bye for now. Have a good one. And uh, I think we're in for some thunderstorms today here in the UK. So, it should be a bit exciting today. So take care, everybody. I'll see you all again. Bye for now.